Okay, we're gonna make some chicken parmesan and I've got my, I'm gonna use boneless thighs. You can use breast, obviously, but we're gonna use the thigh. I think the thigh has a little better flavor and stays a little moister, but you can definitely use the breast. So what I have here is I have two eggs that I've just kind of beaten up with a fork. I have some pesto sauce that I um, made in the video with the tomato sauce that we're gonna to use tonight and my thighs that I seasoned with salt and I've already mentioned to you a couple of times about the Borsario or Borsari um, seasoning, which I'm almost out of. I'm gonna have to get to Whole Foods and get some more. So I seasoned the chicken breast with that. Then um, I'm gonna put this one over here in the fire and I'll show you how I did these two. Took the breast, I just did kind of a quick little with a, this, this is maybe about three quarters of a cup of seasoned gluten-free breadcrumbs and a half a cup of gluten-free flour. And put the breast in there, then I'm gonna dip it in the egg just to get a little better batter on it. Then we'll um, put it back a few breadcrumbs, then I'm gonna just kind of mush it around. My hands are getting really sticky here. I'm going to have to use the other hand. Kind of put some of the pesto sauce on it. We're going to go back into the um, breadcrumb flour mixture. And I had some olive oil in my skillet. I'm going to put these over here. We're just going to get a nice brown on them because we're going to cook them, finish cooking them in the oven. So take my last one here, toss it in the egg, get it around, back into the flour a little bit. Then we're going to get this pesto on it. You may not have uh, seen pesto used in the chicken parmesan, but just trying to get all the flavor that we can in there on the chicken. We're going to go back into the breadcrumbs, get them all patted on here, okay, and then into the hot skillet, and I'm going to wash my hands off. Now, how much oil did you use in the skillet? Um, I'm going to add a little bit more. There's probably maybe a tablespoon, two tablespoons, and I'm going to add just a little bit more. just so I can get a nice brown. So you don't want them swimming in the, in the olive oil, but you want enough that you can, can get a nice brown on them. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little on them. Okay, and we're gonna let those keep frying and then I'll flip them over and we'll get the other side browned. All right, while I'm finishing browning up the chicken thighs, I'm gonna prepare the pan that I'm gonna put them in. And I'm just going to spray it so everything doesn't really get too sticky with this um, Spectrum olive oil, organic olive oil spray. You can use Pam, you can use whatever you've got. Just put some on the bottom of it. All right, then we're gonna come over here. We've got our chicken thighs all nice and browned. Like I said, they're gonna to continue to cook so you don't have to cook them all the way through. They're going to cook in the oven. Let's see how we can get these all nestled in here. All right. Okay. Then we're going to start our layering process. And I'm going to use a buffalo or bufala uh, mozzarella uh, cheese. And then we're using the Parmesan. I use the grated vegan Vial Life uh, Parmesan. So, why the buffalo? Um, buffalo, for one thing, it doesn't have the lactose in it that cow's milk has, and it just has a really nice flavor. Um, I can actually eat the buffalo mozzarella, buffalo cheese, and it doesn't cause me the issues that I get if I eat cow's milk. I don't get congested 
um, but don't get any stomach issues. So that's why we use the bufala. And in fact, in Italy, most of the time when they're using mozzarella, most of the time they are using the buffalo. All right. Okay, so now we're going to assemble. I'm going to start with laying out some of the mozzarella on, on our chicken thighs. Then I'm going to take some of the marinara sauce or the tomato sauce that I made earlier and we're going to spoon that over. Now you can definitely, if you want, if you're making the, the basic sauce that we made tonight in the other video, um, you want a meat sauce, you can always add your meat to it. We typically do it up just as a straight marinara so that we can use it in a number of different dishes. Okay, put a little bit more of this on here. So we want a nice, nice bed. All right, I'm going to layer a little bit more of the mozzarella. Um, you can even with this sauce, you can, as I had mentioned when I was making it, that you can make it a, a vodka sauce. You can make it a puttanesca sauce by adding olives to it, or you can add some red pepper flakes to it, make it a little spicy um, for um, a, 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 a rabiata. <laughs> a rabiata. <laughs> a rabiata sauce. So it's just basically kind of, it's your base sauce. Now I'm going to go ahead and I want to add on this is chicken parm, right? So we need to add on the Parmesan. As little or as much as you, as you want. And I'm going to put it in the oven at 350 for about 30, 35 minutes. Okay, after about 30, 35 minutes, we've taken it out of the oven and we're going to serve it up tonight just on a bed of mixed greens. Um, you can uh, serve it however you want, um, over pasta, with a side of pasta, serve it on a plate with a vegetable, or serve it over a salad like we're going to do tonight. If you're watching your carbs, then um, doing it this way is great, or doing it just with a, a side dish of roasted vegetables. Um, before I do that, I've got a little bit of Caesar dressing that I had made up and we've been using this week. So I'm going to just lightly dress the greens with a little of the Caesar dressing. Then I'm going to place, ouch, ouch. <laughs> touched it and I just took it out of the oven. I want to place one of the thighs on each of our plates. Wish you could smell this. It smells so good. If you want a little extra sauce on it. Obviously if you were doing the pasta you'd probably want a little extra sauce. And we're going to finish up. I'm going to just julienne some basil leaves. So you've taken the leaves, taken the stems off. You lay them on top of each other. Roll it up. This is also called chiffonade. And we just slice through. And we're going to get these wonderful little strips. We can do a little bit of extra of the Parmesan cheese around on the salad. You could have even used the pesto that we made and put that on top of the salad before you put your chicken parm. And then we're just going to put a few of the basil leaves like this on the top. And we are ready to eat. So, bon appetito!